the lead singer for our drum, Spirits and Singers. And I'm from Gabaskigamog, Swan Lake First Nations, Manitoba. I also want to introduce you to some of our singers here today. Uh, first we have, to my left, Kyle Fontaine. I come from Sagging First Nations. Miigwech. Hello, bonjour. My name is uh, Timothy Esquash. I'm also from Gabaskigamog, Swan Lake First Nation, Manitoba. It is an honor for us today to share these songs with you in honor of a friend, uh, a relative, a good human being who has gone on, but who started this process for all of us. I myself uh, am a day school survivor, and my parents had went to residential school as well. That first, this first song we sing, the song is about the words, and it say, Miguena Mik Da Puewin. And the song we had made many, many years ago when we had first had the opportunity of uh, uh, supporting when this, uh, the day school's claims had started, when it started to get acknowledged. And I remember a friend of ours, Mr. Gary McLean had started that process. And so we were very fortunate to be able to, to sing at that time. And that first song was the one that, that we uh, had composed for the day school survivors to remember the truth. And I guess it was a message to send to not only the government, but the people of Canada of the truth that has taken place in this country. And we want Canadians and people to know the things that we have survived and the atrocities we had faced and how we are resilient people and we have adapted and moved forward and we will continue to do so. So that's what that first song represents. It says, remember the truth, and that's a message for everyone to hear. The second song we sing is to honor the day school survivors, to honor the ones that went to day school, that suffered the many atrocities, the many hardships. We honor our survivors, we honor our people because that's what they are. They're survivors. They made it through. And we, we hope that these songs we sing will help to ease the pain and the memories and the suffering that they went through. But again, it's our honor to sing these songs for you here today. So again, from my home fire, our drum, and our family, we say miigwech for this honor to sing today for you. Hi, hi, miigwech.
Thank you very much from Spirit Sand Singers and our family and our home fire for having for giving us this honor here today to sing these songs for all you good people. Again, we're very grateful for having this opportunity. Miigwech and ask mitdow. Hi hi. Good afternoon. My name is River Ward and it is my honor to be your MC today. I want to welcome you to the McLean Day Schools Settlement Corporation launch ceremony. Today is about officially launching our organization 
and beginning an engagement process with survivors to decide how to implement a $200 million legacy fund. We offer a very special and warm welcome to survivors of Federal Indian Day Schools and your families. This ceremony is dedicated to you all. Today we are grateful to gather on the traditional territory of our Mi'kmaq people. While we wish everyone could be here together in person, we are happy to be able to make use of technology that brings us together from coast to coast. If you logged in a little early, you heard Fawn Wood's incredible voice and saw our peaceful surroundings here at the Gipbo Spirit Lodge. Our lodge is on the banks of the Miramichi River at Eel Ground First Nation in New Brunswick. Today's ceremony began with a powerful performance by the Spirit Sands singers from Manitoba, the homeland of our lead representative plaintiff, Gary McLean. The drumbeat reminds us that we are all connected to one another, to our ancestors, and to Mother Earth. We thank our drummers for their songs to honor survivors. Before we get started, I want to make sure you are comfortable and have everything you need. We have interpretation available in Inuk Tichut Cree. Unfortunately, our Ojibwe interpreter is uh, ill, so we will not have them with us today. And we will also have uh, interpretation in French. And you can select your preferred language on our landing page where you logged in today. Technical support is available at any time by clicking the box on the upper right-hand side of the page. You can also join today's uh, ceremony via you know, the whole free telephone numbers listed in the language of your choice. Captioning is available for the hearing impaired, but it is not perfect. We ask for your forgiveness if the captions are not 100% accurate. If you wish to keep in touch with us and learn more about our work going forward, please join our mailing list by providing your email on the landing page. I'll now invite our mental health spokesperson, Elaine Kiknasaway, to talk about the mental health support available today. Elaine? I live in the Ottawa region, uh, Anishinaabek territory. For many of you, today will be an emotional day. If at any point you need to talk to someone or take a break, we have health workers, mental health workers here to support you. On the bottom right of the landing page, you can request that support worker to call you. Our support workers today are Colleen Heal Cardinal, Shelley Francis, Mandy Halbot, Brian Isidore, Catherine Lalivere, Stephanie Peltier, Brittany Lee Pye, and Crystal Toots. After our ceremony, there will be a 15 minute break for you to stretch your legs and get a drink or rehydrate. The beginning of the 2.45 p.m. Eastern time, you're encouraged to use the same live stream link to tune into a free mental health aftercare session. The session is designed to empower you with tools and resources to take care of your mental health today and every day. We hope you'll join us. Miigwech and Aye, aye. Thank you, Elaine. I'd now like to invite our honored elders, Elder George Paul from Metapanagia First Nation and Elder Sally Webster from Baker Lake, Nunavut to offer prayers to open our launch ceremony. Elder Paul, please go ahead. I sing this song from our ancestors that were here for thousands of years and also keep in mind our relatives and all our future generations that, that will be coming for uh, honor and respect. <clears throat>
Thank you for that, for Paul. That was beautiful. I'd like to ask Inuit elder Sally Webster to please offer her prayers. Sally? Okay. All right. Thank you for this song and thank you for inviting me. I'm going to do a short prayer in my own language because God knows our hearts and how we, how we are feeling and remembering that people are that who has been gone to school left their parents behind. And I'm sure the parents were thinking about them every day and doing a prayer for them during their going to school, uh, day schools. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Anga yo kangi tu kiu ti valaoto no ta kami ne na ma ko ye bluti ta ma ko ta ma ta ko ye tu te riyaka tu kse aponga a tinga ni Jesus Amen Thank you Thank you for your beautiful prayers Elder Webster Now it is my pleasure to introduce you to our CEO Elder Claudette Commanda, our board members, Chief Roger Augustine, and Dr. James Igliorte. Claudette. Thank you. Kwe Kakina. Hello, everyone. Welcome. It is a beautiful, beautiful day today. The elders have blessed us with their prayers. The elders have blessed us with their singing. The drummers have blessed us with that honor song. It's a beautiful day because we are all here as survivors. And I thank you for being here. My name is Claudette Commanda. I am an Algonquin from the Kitagon, Zibi, and Anishinaabeg First Nation, located in the province of Quebec. I'm honored to represent who I am, my family, and to speak in respect for the survivors of my community and as well as for the survivors across this beautiful land called Canada. I am a mother of four and a grandmother of 10. And I know that my children and my grandchildren are listening today for they too are survivors. I am a day school survivor. I'm honored to be part of the McLean Day School Settlement Corporation to be a member of the board, most honored to have met Gary McLean, to have learned from his vision, to be part of his legacy of healing, of hope and remembrance for the Federal Indian Day School survivors and their families. We honor Gary McLean with utmost respect. I thank his family for sharing him with all of us. I give thanks to the elders, Elder George Paul and Elder Sally Webster. I love you, Elder Paul, and I love you, Sally. I thank George, Chief George Ganish and the Mi'kmaq community for welcoming us so lovingly in their community. I thank all the survivors and their families for joining us today at this launch event. Today marks two years, August 19th, 2019, when the court approved the day school settlement, a milestone in pursuit of justice for day school survivors. And today is another milestone, a point in time for survivors and their families. I acknowledge Mariette Buckshot who joins us to, today. Mariette and I are from the same community of Kitagon, Zibi, and Anishinaabe, and she is a plaintiff for the family class. Greetings, Mariette. I welcome and I thank the day school survivors and your families for joining us today for this historic event, the launch of the Outreach Engagement Plan for survivors and their families concerning the Legacy Fund. 
I am thankful to be working alongside Jim Igloliorte and Roger Augustine to continue the important work on the Legacy Fund and in upholding the vision and hopes of Gary McLean. Chi miigwech. Thank you. I now ask Roger Augustine to give his remarks. Roger. Good morning, Claudia. In Roger Augustine, the clear I want to thank Claudia for her kind remarks and I'm looking forward to working with Jim. And I want to acknowledge Young River for the excellent work he's doing for us today. And one of the things that, uh, that confirms that uh, River is a, is a smart guy, it didn't take him long to, uh, to apply for a job for the Indian day schools. He says, if you're looking for an advisor, I'm available, he said. And uh, River, uh, we're going to remember you. <laughs> George Paul, George Paul I, and I have been working together since uh, 1976 and 1980, when I first became the chief here at Eel Ground. I, I used uh, George and, and, and his brother, Tully, to, to do ceremonies um, for us and with us. And, uh, and today, you are witnessing a product that with his support and support from Medibunaria has been extraordinary. So our community here is to kneel ground is all part of other communities. The Gitpu Spirit Lodge is, as you saw earlier in the presentation, is one of the gifts that Gary has left behind for us to, to work. And soon you'll see lodges like the Gitpu Spirit Lodge right across the country. This whole idea that we're doing here uh, with the Gitspur Spirit Lodge is to replace the harm the Indian day schools have done, the Indian residential schools. I want to take this time also to acknowledge Senator Sinclair for the work that he's done in, in, in the uh, residential schools it's through his spirit and strength that, that we are experiencing and, and um, and enjoying together, holding hands and, and going on. This is a journey. This is just the beginning. The work has just started here five minutes ago. And the Gitpu Spirit Lodge is officially open now. And I want to thank again the Chief and Council of the Yule Ground First Nations for their support. Chief George and his council made it all possible for us. We're walking together with all our communities. And I also want to acknowledge a very not an old friend, but a friend by the name of former National Chief Phil Fontaine. He made a brave move a long time ago and placed his name in front and gave us the strength to carry on. We owe a lot to men like Sinclair and, and, and Chief Fontaine. So I'll be speaking a little bit more later, but right now is, this is an emotional, powerful day for all of us. It's, and this is just the beginning. And I am so proud to, to be given this people that are working with me here today, not only the ones sitting behind the desk here or the table, but everyone, the technicians that are here today that, you know, I've never seen anything uh, so professionally done and with a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, respect and I also want to acknowledge a lady that's been working with us now, Lauren. And she's a natural at this job, and it's, it means a lot for us. Because uh, when you come to our territory, uh, it's, you, you have to be careful in what you say and how you present yourself. There are some people who are naturally respectful. So with that, I'm going to stop for now. And I, uh, I feel so powerful and honored to, to, to be here and to represent the Gary McLean Indian Day School. Gary was a friend, a personal friend of mine, and him and I talked a lot, and he's chased me from one end of the country to the other. <laughs> um, every time I turn around, if I'm in Manitoba or British Columbia, it doesn't matter. Every time I turn around, he's standing there. He says, Roger, we need to talk. <laughs> and that's what we did, and here we are today. So with that, 
Thank you, and thank you for taking the time to, to watch this presentation today. We appreciate it. We love you, and we're looking forward to this journey that's going to go on for the rest of our lives. Thank you, Roger. I will now ask Jim Igli Viorte to give his remarks. Nakumik, Roger, Nakumik, Claudette, Amolusali, Nakumipa, Kuyan Namik. I want to say a couple of words that I've learned already in the Mi'kmaq language. Ipjila say, we are at the Gitbu Spirit Lodge and we feel most welcome here. We feel most welcome to be at Nadu Waganeg lands. Thank you so much for your kind invitation, elders. Atilihai, tunga suritsi, uvanga yimi uvanga ingliliuti, nunat sevami pivunga, inuvunga. As my other two colleagues have stated, we are honored, we're proud to be here, we're starting something absolutely new with you, and we are honored to serve you, survivors, family members, and we promise to work hard to ensure that this uh, legacy announcement today and after today respects the memory of Gary McLean. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for your strong leadership on behalf of the day school survivors across the country. I now have the great honor of introducing Kristen McLean, daughter of lead representative plaintiff, the late Gary McLean, from whom the McLean Day School Settlement Corporation takes its name. Kristen? Thank you, River. Hello, Anine, and welcome to all. It is my pleasure to spend this time with you and be in your company. My name is Kristen McLean, and I'm proud to say I'm Gary's daughter. When I was asked if I would like to say a few words today, I happily said yes, as I know it is a way to honor dad, his life, and yours. To dad and so many, he knows there is connection and support in speaking and sharing. He would be the first to remind us we often don't realize who needs our words, story, or point of view. Dad regularly tried to seek balance and humility in his life. His early mornings were spent getting his mind and spirit filled with positive readings and prayer for the day. When he'd hit a good reading that day, he'd express it by saying, yes, that's awesome. He believed it wasn't his job to fix things, but made efforts to fill each day with positive actions and inter intentions. As things came up, he liked knowing he could select thoughts and options before speaking or reacting. He loved to be ready to go and shake things up and move them forward. He was excited about living and loved to tell you all about it. He was committed to sharing, creating and helping. He often thought if you start doing something and can't find a positive, then what or who are you doing it for? If you felt stuck, stuck, he could often see or sense your struggle. He let you know he was there with patience and love. One of his favorites was to cheer you on, offering guidance and support. He'd love to share a belly laugh with you and be the loudest laugh in the room. I often thought of dad as a light person. His gifts were joy and strength. The experiences he endured, survived, and spent his life working through were used as tools to create connections and support. He thought there's nothing that can't be talked about. You may not be in agreement, but instead of getting angry or upset, talk to the person or someone you trust. Have faith the situation can be worked out. He felt it wasn't his job to bring you down, but to try to lift you up in whatever you were facing or dealing with. In his own life and story, there were many things he was in the process of learning and figuring out. A big part of his journey was regular being open to trying, learning, accepting, and forgiving. While remembering to remain open to what could be and not quitting during times of challenge or setbacks. 
Today, we speak of legacy, healing, and education. It's what he and the plaintiff team have been working to build and share. They wanted experiences and voices to be heard and truths free to be spoke without conditions, barriers, or boxes to fit in. Dad wants and will keep supporting and showing what forgiveness and unconditional love is and how it regularly walks beside and within us. While the work continues, his messages remain. Live and enjoy life. Do whatever you can today that fills your spirit and soul with joyful happiness. Be present, be humble, laugh and enjoy. Surround yourself and others who bring light and joy. Let go for yourself if you can and help and pray for those who may not yet be ready. Dad would say, that's okay. They'll get there if they're ready. And if they're not, that's okay. Remember your strengths and gifts and beautifully share them in your life. We regularly think and speak of truth and reconciliation, which first begins within each of us. As human spirits, we are in a regular state of trying to reconcile truths about, of, and within ourselves. Dad was regularly working through his own truths too. He had struggle, loss, challenge throughout his life. He would be the first to say after given choice, he walked on some of the wrong paths first before realizing there were other ways to go and entirely different paths. However, throughout his life, he continued his empathetic and caring ways. Whenever you were struggling, he understood what this could mean for you. And he looked to find little ways to ease or help. This is what this means to him. He wanted help if you needed to let you know whatever you face or are reconciling with, that it is safe, open and welcome to talk about. We can handle it. If next steps are wanting to be taken, guidance, connections and support are waiting too. Dad wanted and wishes continued and lasting healing for all. He knows each day we each have our own work to do, but this never has to be alone. He wishes opportunity for reconnections, discovering, learnings and peace. So when you can keep seeking balance, be curious, be serious, reflective and forgiving, but also remember to laugh, share and use your gifts and talents. We need them. When darkness steps forward, keep using strength to fight. When and if you feel stuck, ask for help. It is there if you are willing. Dad's legacy is to leave the world in more joy than he had experienced. It is his hope, the team's vision and work to help others find peace, balance and healing for each individual. In love and light always, I thank you and miigwech. It truly feels as though your father is, is with us today and we can feel his energy, enthusiasm, positivity, and joyful spirit that earned him the nickname Sunny Boy. Thank you for helping us learn more about his vision and legacy. We're also fortunate to have other representative plaintiffs with us today. Uh, the courageous group of women uh, work tirelessly to ensure the experiences of the Federal Indian Day School survivors uh, were recognized and bring about a fair settlement. Uh, I would like to ask Marriott Buckshot to tell us about the Legacy Fund and what it means from a survivor's perspective. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge Angela Elizabeth Simone Sampson and Margaret Swan. Unfortunately, they could not be with us today, so I ask Marriott to please begin. Roger Augustine, James Onje Gary McLean aban udano kiwen. Onje ga kina beno jinshak ga wa kaza jik ki kina mad nanin ka mbaku ni ge ka mbaku ni ge gin bin jayanish nabe tina kiwen. 
Hi, my name is Marriott Buckshot, and I am from Kirigan Zibi Anishinaabe community. I am happy knowing fellow Indigenous people will represent and sit on the corporation of MDSSC. Elder Claudette Kamanda sits in this corporation along with Regional Chief Roger Augustine and retired Judge Dr. James Igloliort for the late Gary McLean's work for all the children that were abused in the schools built on the reserves. My late dad went to two different schools in the reserve. Every summer he told his mother, I don't want to go back to school. And every fall, his late mother would send him. When he was 12 years old, he quit school. He used to go around saying, I was taught how to be a man. He never told us what really happened to him while in school. He died in June of 2020 before, sorry, before he got a settlement check. So whatever happened to him in, that school, in those schools, this is what he knew to raise his children. So with the launch of the McLean Day School Settlement Corporation, I am happy that the board consists of Claudette, Roger, and James. I feel a sense of comfort knowing they will be overlooking the Gary McLean Trust Fund. I apologize. Our people suffered abuse from time immemorial. We were given illnesses and sicknesses, infestations of bugs and addictions. We were beaten, raped and killed for our resources the Creator gifted us with. We were suppressed, segregated and colonized in such, in such ways that we should have that should have destroyed us all. But as we sit together today <laughs> through Zoom, discussing the launch of this corporation, mm -hmm. we are showing our resilience by standing up and reclaiming our traditional roots, culture, language, and our spiritual, physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Even though MDSSC is at the beginning stages of a process that has been long time coming. And the work will bring them to communities to hear the stories of the survivors. They will learn of the needs of the communities and the people in each community. It is our time to tell our truths, our stories and traumas. Time to teach the truths of how we were casted as savages that needed to be tamed and colonized in ways that was inhumane. It's time we show our resilience and strengths to stand above all the wrongs that were done to us and to show the world that we still exist and continue to be heard and seen. It is time to reclaim our languages, cultures, and traditions of our for our future generations. It is also time to heal from the traumas brought upon our people, illnesses, sicknesses, assimilation, colonization, addictions, and the beliefs that are not of our teachings. This trust that Gary McLean created was for communities to have a financial stability and assistance to help communities revitalize their languages and cultures, to have healing and treatment centers for the different addictions and mental illnesses our people have encountered, and to have professional and specialists in the fields of mental well being. Gary McLean, Mi kichimi gwach Gary McLean, onjega kenake dogam tawe. 
kigi migi wen kimashka wizi wen ashid sagi de wen onjega kenna ka tebwetaman kan we ka kiga wani kanagusi thank you very much gary mclean for all your hard work you gave your strength and love for everything you believed in and you will never be forgotten miwech thank you Thank you, Mariette, for sharing your bravery with us today. Besides officially launching our organization, today's ceremony is also to celebrate the beginning of a cross-country engagement process with survivors and their families. I'd like to ask CEO Commanda to tell us more about the outreach and engagement process and how people can participate. Thank you. Thank you, River. How do you follow uh, such uh, powerful uh, words, heartfelt, emotional? Uh, thank you, uh, Kristen, for the beautiful words you shared about your father. Very heartfelt the love and positive energy your father had for all. Thank you for reminding us who he was. Thank you for reminding us the importance of kindness which he had and which he carried so well. Chimi Gwedge, Mariette. Chimi Gwedge. Thank you, Mariette, for sharing your reflections on the importance of the Legacy Fund. Your powerful words are much appreciated. Chimigwej for sharing your father's story, your courage. You had the courage to share, and we thank you for that courage. Know, know that we love you, Mariette, and we honor your father. So thank you both to you, Mariette, and to Kristen for sharing. It indeed today is an emotional day. Indeed today is a day that not only do we celebrate, but we must remember, we must commemorate. And it is through love and our tears that healing will come, hope, wellness, and as Mariette said, it is through the language and our culture that we will find that healing, and it's so important. And this is what the Legacy Fund speaks about, the Legacy Fund to support healing and wellness, to support language and culture promotion, to support commemoration and truth-telling. Very important that the truth will be told and that our survivors and their families will have that opportunity in a most respectful and safe space to tell their truths. And we must listen to the truths, respect the truths. We will cry, we will pray, and we will celebrate with one another too as well because we have survived. We have survived for who we are as as Anishinaabe people, we will survive for our children, our grandchildren, and we have survived because our ancestors always watched over us. And our children, who are yet to come, the seven generations, they continue to give us that strength and that hope. So again, I say thank you, Mariette, and thank, thank you, Kristen. I am pleased to share a brief overview on the engagement process. The outreach engagement process is needed to help the board of McLean's Day School Settlement Corporation to design a framework for the implementation of the Legacy Fund that directly supports survivors, their families, and communities. We will use all input received to shape the parameters 
of the Legacy Fund and the future of this organization. The engagement process is specific to the Legacy Fund and this engagement process is needed to assist the board with the implementation of the Legacy Fund. I may sound repetitive, but it's for the purpose of stressing the importance of this outreach engagement session. We need your help, your voice, for the implementation of the Legacy Fund. And as survivors, we all know how critical it, this Legacy Fund is needed for our communities, and it must go to the communities. The engagement process will consist of holding engagement sessions with survivors and their families. Your voices, thoughts, and recommendations are essential. There are different options available for survivors and their families to participate. Regional outreach sessions to be held virtually, online, email, and mail. The plan is to hold engagement sessions regionally across the country, commencing late September to November of 2021. The dates and the location planning is in progress. However, the first session will be held in the Atlantic region in late September. The information will be posted on our website. As we move forward in planning regional sessions, our website will contain the updated details on the locations, dates, and other relevant information on the sessions. The online consultation platform, the G Digital Outreach for Federal Indian Day School Survivors and Their Families, is officially launched today. It is available. Please see our website. The online consultation has a series of guiding questions relating to the Legacy Fund. Space is provided for your comments, your thoughts, your recommendations. Survivors can also participate by mail or mail. You can find our email and mailing addresses on our website. It is important for us as the board and as survivors that the voices of survivors and their families remain central to the work of the McLean Day School Settlement Corporation. As such, survivors and the families are vital in informing us on the administration and implementation of the Legacy Fund. The Legacy Fund will be used for projects and initiatives under those four themes that were previously identified, and I will repeat them again. Healing and wellness, language and culture promotion, commemoration, and truth telling. Again, I mentioned the Legacy Fund will directly support day school survivors, your families, and communities. Therefore, I encourage all survivors, your families, to participate in the engagement process. We need to hear from you. We respectfully welcome your thoughts, your guidance, and your recommendations. And I look forward to receiving those. Chi miigwech, thank you. Thank you, Claudette. Um, just before I go any further, I want to thank everyone that is a part of this today and um, on here. You guys are the reason why I have a future, why I'm here uh, as a 23-year-old man. I still have a lot of life left to live and you guys give me the strength to do that. The McLean Day Schools uh, Settlement Corporation is an organization for survivors and their families, which is why it is so important that the survivors are at the heart of this this organization and are a part of all of our work. Their voices and wisdom will shape the administration of the Legacy Fund and the future of the organization. Our survivors include both First Nations and Inui from every province and territory except Newfoundland. 
Our next group, the I Kaluk, is made up of Inuit throat singers and drummers from Nunasidavu and Nunavut and Nunavik. This group, whose name means the children's way of calling to each other, is teaching drumming to the next generation of Inuit. We hope you enjoy this performance and the beautiful harbor views of St. John's, thanks to the generosity of the rooms. This performance is dedicated to my poppy Ken Mesher, who is a residential school survivor. Our group is called Aikuluk. It means a children's way of calling each other. And in the group is Jenny, Ashley, Cam, Noah, Paulusi, and Anthony. This next song, written by Jenny Williams, translates to We will drum for you. We will remember you. Your memory will live on in our hearts forever. We will drum for you. We will remember you. Always. Enjoy.
What a beautiful performance. I couldn't stop smiling as I watched the young men show off their uh, new drum dancing skills. <laughs> uh, thank you to the Ikaluk for that lovely performance. Seeing our children uh, embracing their culture is proof of our resilience. Many of you uh, written questions to us that you'd like the CEO and board members to answer. I'd now like to invite CEO Commanda and the board members to personally answer some of your questions. Claudette. Uh, thank you, River. I am pleased now to uh, hold this uh, question period. We are very pleased to have uh, received questions um, from across the land, and uh, we are very pleased to answer your questions. I will read out uh, a question, and um, let's see who is going to answer the question. <laughs> Well, I can't help it, eh? Being a professor, you do the Socratic method. So you call on your students, you identify which student's gonna answer. So either Jim or Roger, and they have no choice in it, they're gonna answer the question. <laughs> so I'm gonna begin with question one. What is the McLean Day School Settlement Corporation? And I think Roger can answer that question. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to answer that question with, with a, a statement. Um, and I think it's now more than appropriate to, uh, to, uh, to talk to the spirit of Gary McLean. Gary was a voice out there in, in a lonely uh, road that he traveled representing 200,000 survivors. As lead plaintiff, he the class action court case met his Waterloo and Gary McLean became a legend. I now today sit in at the Gitbu Spirit Lodge and Gitbu Spirit Lodge you see, is a type of project um, that you're gonna see right across the country. There is a money set aside, like 200 million fund set aside to do projects like this. But I also know that 200 million is not a lot of money when you want to do something as elaborate and intelligent as Gitpu Spirit Lodge and other, and other lodges across the country. There are people out there just sitting and waiting. People like Chief uh, George Guinness who wants to help us. And then the other one is George Paul. George Paul has been doing this type of work now for 50 or 60 years. If anyone had, that made a serious attempt to close the pain and, and react to it and, and be the spirit leader for, for the voices that, that remain to be unheard. I want to also acknowledge in, 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 in pain uh, the young boys and girls that, that died in Kamloops and across this country. Their voices are being heard. And my message, together with my colleagues here, is that your spirit is being represented here by this board, and we're going to continue honoring your voice. Not too far from here is the Yield Ground Indian Day School, where I where I was involved. In 1953, at six years old, I arrived at the, at the door at the uh, Eel Ground Indian Day School. And as soon as I could feel and, and smell the school, at those days, they use cleaning liquid set that'll probably will never leave your mind or your body or your spirit. I bolted and headed out towards Mermishi River running. I thought no one would be fast enough could catch me. The river that you are looking at now is the Mermishi River. And um, it, it, it was the end of my trail. Eel Ground Indian Day School. Later on, as time moved forward, I was able to use the same building as a drug and alcohol education center. And we did that for years and years and years. Today, that school 
now is also used as the after school program for kids in Eel Ground. So you can turn around, you can work with, you know, the positive side of all communities and to help us move forward. We are moving forward and this time nobody is going to be able to stop us. God bless. Thank you, Roger. Thank you for those powerful words and answering uh, the question. Truly appreciate it. The next question, what is the purpose of the Legacy Fund and how will it support federal Indian Day School survivors and their families? Well, seeing that I've already mentioned what the Legacy Fund is earlier, I may as well answer this question for those that perhaps are just joining now and also as, as a refresher. So as mentioned before, the Legacy Fund was created to support those four primary areas. Language and culture, healing and wellness, commemoration and truth telling. Grants from the Legacy Fund will be made based upon proposals from nonprofit organizations, community base, survivor groups, and others. What is most important to us is that the voices of the survivors and their families remain central to the work of the McLean's Day School Settlement Corporation. You, the survivors, and your families, and your communities, you are vital in informing the administration and implementation of the Legacy Fund. So as previously mentioned, to s support this, we are launching this historic engagement process to respectfully consult with the survivors, their families and communities, and how the Legacy Fund should be structured, implemented and distributed to be responsive to the unique needs we are currently in the startup phase and we are working to develop the guidelines and procedures for organizations to follow in applying for the grants under the Legacy Fund. And more information will become available following the outreach process. And again, I stress survivors' input is critical in developing, designing the framework for the Legacy Fund implementation and distribution. Thank you. So question number three, does McLean Day School Settlement Corporation have anything to do with the settlement claims process? Excellent question. And I will ask my colleague Jim to answer this question. Jim? Thank you so much, Claudette. I think uh, as we heard, this is the anniversary of uh, since 2019 of when the uh, settlement was announced. There are two parts to the settlement. Carved out of the settlement was a section, as mentioned, of, of uh, $200 million having to do with the legacy fund, the legacy components. And it was our role as the founding board members, A, to select a law firm, we decided and chose to stay with Gowling's WLG. Then we had auditors, accountants, investments firms, banks, communications people, and finally, we come now to the most important aspect of the Legacy Fund, and that is serving the survivors and the family members. We will be coming to you to look for board members, three more additional board members are needed, and eventually an advisory panel of up to 12 people. Remember that as a separate corporation, we have no information about your personal claim, we have no information about your status or the result of your claim. We actually have a very separate jurisdiction, responsibility and authority and that has simply to do with the management 
and administration of the legacy fund. So we, we are honoring that responsibility and we look to you to help us complete that work. Thank you, Claudette. Thank you, Jim. Uh, good questions are, are coming in. And here's the next question. Can you tell us more about your outreach process for federal Indian Day School survivors and their families? And I know we spoke about this earlier in a presentation. However, again, I'll mention, um, I'll mention or I'll, I'll answer this question given that I spoke to it earlier. And for those that are just joining now or again for as a refresher. So can you tell us more about your outreach process for federal Indian Day School survivors and their families? Very important question. Well, long after the compensation, the claims process is completed, our hope is that the McLean's Day School Settlement Corporation and the Legacy Fund will create enduring outcomes for the day school survivors. And it, it is important that we continue the work. Important we continue to work for the survivors and their families. We want the Legacy Fund to be as responsive as possible truly meeting the needs and expectations of you, the survivors, and your families. So we appreciate any input from you, your families, and of course, community stakeholders. And as we previously stated, we would be very honored to receive your feedback as we launch a series of these engagement sessions. Please, Please go to the digital outreach page on our website, read the guiding questions, give your input. And I want to also mention that, yes, there are those different options, regional virtual sessions, online consultation platform, sending by email or sending by mail. You could choose one of the four or you can choose to participate in all of four. Because what's important here is this is your opportunity, your voice, your thoughts in providing us with recommendations to guide us in developing, designing, and implementing and distributing the Legacy Fund. So please go to our McLean's uh, Day School uh, website. Uh, I believe you can find uh, the website uh, on your screens below the viewing window on the live stream page uh, you are now on. So I thank you and, and also uh, if, if there are further questions that you have regarding engagement sessions, please email those questions as well. So we, and we are hopeful that the outreach which will commence in the fall of 2021 will result in robust, meaningful, and a transparent engagement in a safe, supportive way that better determines the direction of the Legacy Fund and its, and its initiatives. We must always remain hopeful that positive outcomes, positive outcomes will be those guiding mechanisms for the delivery of the Legacy Fund. So thank you. So next question, what is the McLean Day School Settlement Corporation doing to support day school survivors mental health? And given that Roger, Roger's vision on healing and wellness, I, I think that Roger is, can answer this question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claudette. Your well-being is extremely important to us. We know that seeing, hearing, and talking about experiences of survivors in federal Indian day schools can be very difficult. For this event, we have put together multiple avenues for mental health support. On the bottom of your right screen, if you click on the support button, you can put in your phone number and train mental health counselor can help you. If you click on the button for additional mental health information, you will find a, a, 
a resource that outlines contact information for regional mental health and emotional support. As always, the Hope for Wellness Crisis Support at 1-855-342-3310 is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to offer culturally safe counseling and crisis intervention in, in English, French, Cree, Nuktuk, and Ojibwe. In closing, in, in my, my section side of business is that what I want to say to you, that we're going on a journey together as we travel across this country to hear voices, not only voices that are, that are still hurting today, but the voices that gone on, people and young kids that were, that were murdered, whose lives were taken senselessly by people that are supposed to be looking after them. Those, that kind of pain will always be in the hearts of this board members. That kind of pain will always be in the heart in the communities as we, as we travel. And for some, this will be the first time they get a chance to, to voice their concerns and their hurt and their pain. We are here to help you, and this is going to be an extraordinary journey with us, all based on the seven teachings of our people. So with that, I want to thank the... Uh, Again, I want to mention uh, the, how this, the technical side of things operated here today. Very professional, and it has been an honor to, uh, to sit here and to represent the kind of work that we're doing. So with that, uh, the Gitpur Spirit Lodge is honored to, to, to be able to host this. So with that, God bless. Thank you, Roger. How, well, here's the next question. How were the board members selected? I will turn to my learned uh, colleague, Jim, to answer that question. Thank you once again, uh, Claudette. Um, I think people should recognize that uh, all three members of the board of directors for the McLean Day School Step of Corporation were in, in an inaugural board as part of the negotiated uh, settlement back in 2019. It was Gary McLean himself who invited both Claudette and Roger to sit on the board. And I had done some work with the res Residential Schools Commemoration and Healing Program in Newfoundland and Labrador, as well as with uh, some work with the 60s Scoop and was asked to uh, uh, sit on behalf not on behalf of, but by the government of Canada. So all three of us uh, were the founding members, the inaugural members arising out of the settlement. And as, as you've heard me say, and as you've heard my colleagues say, we have more work to do, we have more recruiting to do, and it's, it's clear that it's taken a long time to get to this position. Well, I can tell you that in those two years, we've only been able to meet twice face to face as a group. All of our other meetings have been done virtually. So we've had a bit of a challenge, but as I pointed out, we believe we have a sustainable structure. We believe that we have a good administrative and management team, and we are now prepared with your help to continue Gary's vital work. Thank you, Claudette. Thank you, Jim. Another question has uh, come in. I think this, this question is, uh, it's person. It's one of, uh, in nature of a personal reflection of uh, experience as a day school survivor. How have your experiences as day school survivors shaped your hopes for the future of this organization of the Legacy Fund? Roger, are you comfortable in answering? Well, I'm going to answer anyway. <laughs> Good. Um, well, the important part of this day is that we, 
although we we are focused on you know the the history of our of our people and and history of our culture and, and language i heard one question a while back it was asked by a young person to an elder uh, elder how how do we lose our language the answer the elder gave was that we didn't lose it we just stopped using it and then when I saw all these things happening in Kamloops, for example, right, um, it, it appeared that that the, the the harm that this Indian day schools and Indian residential schools did to our people, um, it was lost. There's no question about that. But some strange reason, the poor souls and spirits and of, that were found in Kamloops that brought us back. The Creator has given us an, another chance to rebuild and build a stronger this time, our language and our culture and our celebration. What's really also important, and I hope as we travel across the country, we'll find ways and people will advise us. Another th situation that's happening across this country uh, with our people is somewhere along the line we stopped talking to each other. We stopped dancing, we stopped feasting together. Those, those things have to be revived and respected one more time. And if all was not totally lost with COVID-19, it provided us a, a picture of what happens to a nation when you stop talking, when you can't talk, when you can't, you can't be together, you can't eat together, can't dance together, can't celebrate together. COVID-19 did that for us, and now we know the difference. And you will find now, this time, you know, communities now that had canceled their powwows, they, they canceled different events, they're gonna be stronger, they're gonna be stronger, we're gonna be louder, and we're gonna celebrate and we're going to bring anybody and everybody with us this time too as well you know here just a, a few days ago we had a celebration with the fireworks and a powwow it's incredible the voices are louder the kids are louder and there's more kids showing up now in powwows we have an opportunity as leaders political social and economic and spiritual leaders to revive to, re, to rejuvenate and to be to be stronger than ever, than ever. So, with that, that is, um, is, I feel grateful today to be alive. Feel grateful to be sitting with these great people now, working together. Um, and this Indian Day School, as we travel across the country, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to hearing the voices of the people, and looking forward to hearing voices as to what the future looks for us. What do we do from now on? How do we build, rejuvenate, and the revival of our people? It's a revolution, a cultural and spiritual revolution for all of us. And we're gonna take advantage of it, and we're gonna be celebrating from this day on. So with that, I thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Roger. And if I may add, as a survivor, how has my experience as a day school survivor shaped my hopes for the future of this organization and the Legacy Fund? Well, truth. Truth will finally be told. Our stories will be heard and believed. Our lived experiences our lived experiences to shape the programs that will be born out of the Legacy Fund, to shape the programs that the McLean's Day School Settlement Corporation can develop and deliver. For example, we will be the drivers 
in healing and wellness, in language and culture, because we know, we know the needs and we have the solutions. And we know how important healing and wellness and how important language and culture are for our people. The Creator gifted us. He gifted us with strength. He gifted us with spirit. And He gifted us with all those beautiful gifts to be who we are as Anishinaabe, to live upon Mother Earth accordingly to the nations that He blessed us with, to be healthy holistically, healthy in, in spirit, in emotions, in intellect, and in body. And we know those assimilation policies through these processes called schools took that away from us, harmed us, hindered our healing and wellness. But the blessings that the Creator gave us, that gift to be healthy, holistic health, we will reclaim that rightful gift. And we will reclaim that rightful gift, restore the right, rightful gift up to us, and the revitalization of who we are as healthy, strong Anishinaabe. And I use the word Anishinaabe because that is who I am in my nation as Algonquin people. But I know that each, each of you have your way of identifying yourself in your language and in your beliefs and in your creation mm -hmm. story. So to me as a survivor, those experiences, it shapes the, the hopes that I have for this organization and the Legacy Fund. Because this organization is survivors oriented, it has a survivor perspective, it's survivor led. It's a collective voice as a people, resilient, strong, determined to bring healing, hope, and wellness to our children in the same way that our ancestors had for us to come and live here upon Mother Earth. Chi miigwech, thank you. And these are all the questions that were submitted to us. And I truly appreciate you submitting these questions. Excellent questions, powerful questions. And I thank both my colleagues, Jim and Roger, for answering the questions with heart and soul, with vision, determination, and hope. And we are committed. We will have all that responsibility in the spirit of Gary McLean's legacy, it is about love, kindness, and hope for the future. Jimmy Gwedge, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you answering uh, these questions from survivors and others. It's uh, really interesting to learn more about the McLean Day School Settlement Corporation as an organization and to think about what the future holds. I would now like to invite our elders to give their closing prayers. Elder George Paul, would you please begin? Okay, well, I'll go to the next one. I'm going to 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 go to the next one. Which could be beneath the girl Dabbing now, Dinamo Ogum. Thank you very much for allowing me to, to do the a, a final presentation here, closing. Mm -hmm. And for all of the ones that have gone through um, the hardship of those uh, day schools, uh, I'm a survivor myself, uh, also a residential school survivor of Shubanagadi. But um, there's so many people out there, and, and the things that are coming out, finally things are being addressed. And, mm -hmm. and from the bottom of our hearts, we, we are celebrating now that we can bring, bring that healing together with, with our culture, with our language, and with, with all our friends who are, who are survivors that understand that you know, there's hope. 
and we are working together now. So I would like to uh, uh, sing this song, which is uh, something from our ancestors. <clears throat> Thank you, Elder Paul. We are grateful you could be here with us today in person in Eagle Ground. Could I please ask Elder Sally Webster to offer her final thoughts and prayers? Sally? Uh, unfortunately, there were some technical difficulties there, so uh, uh, we weren't able to hear uh, Elder Webster, but we still thank you for joining us today uh, from Ottawa, and we are honored to still have you with us. Uh, I have a few remarks before I turn it over to the CEO and board to make their final remarks. First, I want to thank you all for being with us today. This launch ceremony is the beginning of a new chapter for the McLean Day School Settlement Corporation survivors and their families, and we are excited to be on this journey together. Please sign up for our mailing list, subscribe to our social media, and check out our website regularly for updates on our, see, uh, on our uh, work. Uh, CEO Commanda, I'll turn it over to you and the board to please give your final comments. Thank you, River. Job well done, River. Thank you. <laughs> you are a pro. 
I want to thank the elders for the, you know, your beautiful prayers, your, your singing, your blessings. Without you guiding us, we wouldn't be here today. So I say thank you. Shi miigwech, 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 miigwech. I thank the leaders, the speakers, the uh, coordination and support team, technical team. Thank you, Lauren and River. And to all of those that stood behind us to support us while we, we were here, setting up, ensuring that we were comfortable, that we had plenty of water and food, and it, it was just so wonderful to be here. So thank you. I thank the drummers, the singers, uh, the beauty of culture, the beauty of the children, our future. Just warms your heart when you, those young boys, when they were learning their culture and singing their songs. So to all of you, keep up the good work in passing on the culture and the teachings and the language to the children. For it is said that language is a gift from the Creator. It is said that the culture is the expression, expression of who we are as the first peoples of this land. So keep up the good work. It is for the children. I thank uh, my colleague board members, uh, Jim and Roger, for the good work that they are doing. And most of all, I thank you, the day school survivors and your families and your communities for joining us. The success of this launch was made because of you. Yes, it's emotional. We can never forget, can never forget the hardships of our people, can never forget the pain and suffering. And we must commemorate and honor all those that have come before us, those that are now in that spirit world and those that continue to be here with us. We uphold you with great honor and strength and love. The success of our engagement sessions as we proceed with those engagement sessions will be because of you. So I thank you for that, your resilience. And we celebrate here today. We celebrate that we are here together, that we have survived, and we are moving forward. We celebrate because our ancestors have never forgotten us. We celebrate because those seven grandfather teachings continue to uphold us. We celebrate because we know that the work that we do each and every day, no matter the title we hold, it is for the children, our children, our grandchildren, and those seven gener generations that will come. We celebrate because we know our that first mother for all people, our mother of the earth. She continues to provide for us and we must remember her. And we thank that first grandmother, that grandmother the moon and that first grandfather, our grandfather the sun, for their love and their kindness. I look forward to the road ahead, working together on the foundation of Gary McLean's courage guided by the strength of hope to build healing and wellness, language and culture, revitalization of our well-being, commemoration and truth-telling, the power of our ancestors' love and the spirit of prayer will help us today and tomorrow. Let us create a legacy of wellness for us as survivors for our families, our communities, and our children. The love of our children that they have for us just truly uplifts our spirit and gives us that courage and that strength to continue this work of healing for the survivors. For we know, as always said by our elders, those that are no longer with us and those that continue to be with us, the future belongs to the children. And I thank you for your trust. And I promise you that I will uphold my responsibilities in this role that I have here with the McLean's Day School Settlement Corporation with utmost respect, 
love, commitment, and guidance of, from you, the survivors, and your families. And may the Creator keep you and your family safe. And I love you all. Kizagi and Chimigwej, thank you. And I now invite Roger to give his closing words. Thank you, Claudette. And uh, the only thing I want to say right now is to, in honoring the spirits of, of the young that lost their lives and to make this day possible for all of us. And to men and women that put their names forward to, to continue this process. Hope one day that we can sit here and make an announcement that we no longer need funding from the government to continue this type of work and that we're going to be independent and sovereign people uh, and continue this kind of work without having to continue asking others for, for funding and, and help that way. Um, to the spirits of the folks that, that made this work, what it is today, like I mentioned earlier, like National Chief Fontaine, Senator Sinclair, Gary McLean, my message to you is that we will do justice to your spirit today and forever. Merci, Walario. Thank you, Roger. I now invite Jim to give his closing words. Thank you so much, Claudette. The international community, as well as Canada, is learning a new language. It's the language of Indian Day School, Indian Residential Schools, 60s Scoop, the forgotten children of Kamloops and other locations, residential schools in Newfoundland and Labrador, in Nunatsiavut, in Nunavut, in the Inuvialuit region, and in Nunavik. The learning the language of post traumatic stress, the language of intergenerational trauma. Our job is to move ahead now with all of your help to healing and reconciliation. Thank you, Jim. To close, it has been a most beautiful, uplifting day. We began with spirit, prayer, love, and we end with prayer, spirit, and love. We thank the Gitbu Spirit Lodge for hosting us here for this historic event of our outreach launch. Gitbu, Eagle, the spirit of Eagle, and may the spirit of the Eagle, the Grandfather Eagle, always be with you. I want to say a special thank you as well to our mental health support workers. I want to say thank you to Colleen, Shelley, Mandy, Brian, Catherine, Stephanie, Brittany, and Crystal. To you, Lauren, and to your team, thank you. River, Galen, Lee, to all the support people here at Gitbu Lodge. I know you, you hear us, we say chimigwej, thank you. But to all of you out there, we send you our love and our blessing. And there is no goodbye in, in our language. But what we do say, until we see each other again, God bless. We love you all. Chimigwej, kizagian, thank you. Thank you all for your beautiful closing comments. Um, just a reminder that following, uh, we will have a 15 minute break. Everyone is welcome and encouraged to tune into our free mental health aftercare session. Again, that'll be 15 minutes uh, after, we, after we end. Uh, you do not need to log out of the feed, just join us here in 15 minutes time. Uh, you will also find a document with region-specific mental health resources on our landing page. This will be available there permanently for your consult whenever you need it. 
It has been my great honor to share this powerful day with you. And I would like to thank our elders, CEO, board members, speakers, performers, interpreters, videographers, mental health workers, technical crew, and everyone who attended and made this day so special. I want to thank the Gippo Spirit Lodge as well for hosting this, for uh, all the team that is working behind these cameras and everything. It takes a lot to make us four look very glamorous, and it took a village, so <laughs> we thank you guys. Our heartfelt thanks to survivors, your families, uh, and communities for being with us today. Uh, this day is dedicated to all of you. Thank you. Walalan. Well,